Joining me now is John Taylor. He's creator of the Taylor Rule. They that ties interest rates to inflation and economic growth. CNBC senior economics reporter Steve Leisman is here with us as well. Uh, Mr. Taylor, great to see you again. And uh, yeah, I, uh, before I go too far down the road here, just give me your kind of thoughts on, on the action so far. Well, I think they're in the right direction for sure. Remember, it wasn't too long ago. It was 25 basis points. They were way off then, and they're a lot closer now. I think, you know, 5.5 is pretty close to where they're going to be. You can plug in the 3.7% inflation rate, and it's about right on. So I think they're doing the right thing, maybe a little bit more, but they're doing the right thing. And they have seen a little bit more. I don't think it's so bad. Can I ask you, I'm just going to go ahead and jump to a bunch of conclusions here or, or different parts of the of a kind of interest rate complex to talk about. So how do real rates figure into everything? You know, we always talk about the Taylor rule and the different inputs of it, but I'm looking at the 10-year tips yield at 2.1%, more than double where we were in May, with hypotheses floating about how it might be supply-driven because there's so much more government debt to finance. And these they all seem feel like parameters traditionally outside of the Taylor rule. I'm just wondering if you could comment on that. Well, it's not completely outside the Taylor rule. You know, we have an inflation rate in the Taylor rule. It's a very important thing. The inflation rate is most recent reading to 3.7 percent. That's well above the 2 percent. The, the Fed has indicated its target is 2. And so it's closer to the Taylor rule, but it's not uh, all the way. And I think that these are these are things sometimes are put in, sometimes are not. The, un, the un, un, unemployment rate is another factor sometimes. but. I think it's in terms of the inflation rate, it's still well above 2%. Uh, Jay Powell emphasized 2% is there where they're trying to go. So that's that's a factor. Steve, let me bring you in here. Yeah, John, I'm, I'm a little bit, I don't know, confused or whatever. But uh, when you see the Fed's own forecast for next year, they do show inflation coming down. They have a PCE inflation number for two, of 2.5% two on the headline, 26 on the core. And yet they maintain a funds rate of 5.1 percent. That's according to the average. Again, this is not policy. This is the average of, of the officials forecast. But when you do the math, John, help me out here. Doesn't it mean the Fed gets tighter next year? And why would you want to be tightening policy into falling inflation? Do I have my math right? Um, and, and, Professor, please well, tell me if I'm wrong. You, the inflation has come down. Remember, it was 9.1 percent not too long ago. Now it's sure. 3.7, 3.0. And so it's on its way down. And the question is if it's going to continue. I think the, the rate, based on historical comparisons, is about where it has been for similar inflation rates. And so this is a little bit of a tightening, a little bit of a restriction. But the main thing, it's it's important for economic growth. And they've done this in a way that has not stifled economic growth so far. We hope it doesn't. But but is there some danger here of over-tightening? They seem to be on a trajectory for a soft landing. If they tighten next year, make uh, uh, conditions relatively tighter, don't they then risk essentially snatching defeat out of the jaws of victory? I, I think the main thing is what happens to the inflation rate. The inflation rate is on its way down, and, and it's they're doing the right thing in, the, in that respect. If it doesn't come down, then the, the uh, calculations are off, and they have to reconsider. And don't forget, this is a global phenomenon, Steve. It's not just the United States. It's the rest of the world, the ECB, Latin America, uh, which is all part of this whole thing. The more I think we emphasize that it's not just the United States. The United States is a leader here. People pay attention to the Fed, but it's not the only game in town. So, Professor Taylor, help us understand. Let's take Germany as the uh, example here. It's got 10-year bond yields at about 12-year highs, and it's in its third quarter of basically recession. So is that, you know, would you say that the ECB should tighten into that? You know, of course not. Um, their inflation rate is also quite high. So our GDP is better for now, but how much of the, the move in global bond yields right now even is, is related to what's going on with the Fed? And how much do you think has to do with, with the fact that we have this massive glut of government debt to finance? Well, the, the debt is a big issue, and it seems to be there's efforts to bring it down. We'll see if it actually takes place. But I think the main thing that this has been hinted at in Jay Powell's discussion is maybe the, the normal rate, the natural rate, is no longer 1 percent. Maybe it's a little bit higher than 1 exactly. percent. And, and that's an issue which the market's trying to digest.